and we'll proceed to House Bill 1484, providing an enhanced retirement benefit for public employees and teachers' retirement system plans one. Mr. Pringle. Uh, Chair Armsby, committee members, uh, House Bill 1484 provides a one-time $2 uh, per month per year of service uh, increase in the allowance paid to beneficiaries of the Public Employees Retirement System Plan 1 and the Teachers Retirement System Plan 1. And to be eligible, a beneficiary, which means a retired member or survivor, um, must have been receiving a benefit on January 1st of 2017, and then the in increase will be uh, uh, applied uh, July 1st of 2017. Um, a if a retiree um, uh, or beneficiary had selected a sort of a reduced benefit for some reason, a survivor beneficiary or a divided benefit of some sort, um, the amount of the $2 increase would be adjusted similarly. Um, very briefly, by way of background, um, uh, while PERS 1 and TERS 1 were initially created without a, a regular uh, annual adjustment or COLA, uh, in 1995 a uniform COLA ha was uh, created for these plans. and. Um, that increased members' benefits by a number of dollars and cents per year of service that grew over time. Now, that benefit was adopted with a disclaimer of contractual rights. The uh, legislature exercised that, um, that disclaimer and in 2011 uh, repealed the uh, future increases that would have occurred from the uniform COLA. Um, now, a fiscal note is, uh, was prepared by the state actuary and, and the Department of Retirement Systems. The, uh, Updated one that includes the DRS info is on um, green in your books. And what it indicates is that um, uh, employer contribution rates will increase uh, to cover the cost of these benefits um, to the extent that they will uh, create a $38.2 million general fund state impact in the 2017-19 biennium and about 42.6 in the 1921 uh, biennium. Uh, uh, for the longer term, to think about it, the present value uh, of the uh, liability increase that's attributed to this is about $325 million, though that would, of course, be paid for from all funds. And that is a 25-year number? Well, that's the present value of the total increase in benefits that uh, uh, you, you can attribute to this. Um, there's also a fiscal note uh, from the Department of Retirement Systems, as I mentioned. It indicates uh, that about $270,000 uh, in the department's administrative funds would be needed to pay for the, to administer this one-time adjustment. And a significant portion of this is related to about 26,000 accounts from pre-1996 retirees that would require a manual review in order to make sure this was done correctly. Um, and uh, this, like I say, this is not general fund state, though some of it would come through in the rates eventually. Um, one other observation that I got from uh, the actuary's office was that uh, the increase uh, would, on average, represent about a 2% increase in benefits to the members of these plans. Can you explain to us uh, wh whether or not there was a uh, uh, calculation, a uh, consistent calculation that was used before the repeal to decide what the adjustment, the annual adjustment was? Uh, um, well, formula? there were really uh, two, at least two pieces to it. There was an amount of the COLA that was established back in 1995, and that increased by 3% a year. So you had that mm. mechanism where, say, for example, at the, when, it was, when it was repealed, it was about $1.88 per month per year of service that a member would get. So say if you had a member with 25 years of service, they might get about an additional $50 a year and then another $50 the next year, and they sort of build on each other. But it was also tied to gain sharing, and that when there were distrib distributions under the old gain sharing formula, that amount, the $1.88, would be in increased by a sort of a – a calculated amount that the impact of gain sharing had on Plan 1 benefits. Thank you. And now we'll go to, are there any other questions for Mr. Pringle? We'll go to public testimony on, oh, I'm, I'm, we're not going to go to public testimony just yet because we'd like to invite up uh, the prime sponsors, Representative, Representatives Dolan and Johnson. My apologies for the oversight and protocol. I wasn't wearing a bright enough suit. <laughs> <laughs> and my tie was dull. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Um, for the record, my name is Lori Dolan. I am the representative from right here, District 22. And I'm deeply appreciative of the opportunity to present House Bill 1484 um, as the prime sponsor today with my buddy here, Representative Johnson. 
This bill is critically important because there seem to be some perceptions about our Plan 1 retirees that they are living the high life on their defined pensions. During the years I worked for the Spokane Public Schools, during the many years that teachers received no pay raises, what they were told is, no worries. You keep working without pay this year and we're going to take care of you in your pensions, including giving you COLAs to make sure that your pensions stay strong. As you are aware, when the Great Recession hit shortly after that, Plan 1 COLAs disappeared and the people sitting behind us are the ones who paid the price for that. Senator Sam Hunt is sponsoring the same bill in the Senate. And I want to give my partner, Representative Johnson, a chance to speak and then turn this valuable time over to more eloquent voices than mine. But I would ask if um, I'm a teacher, active engagement is what I do. So, Mr. Chair, perhaps knowing that only a few people are going to get to speak, could we at least have the um, Plan 1 retirees raise their hand? Could we do that? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, again, thank you for listening to these stories today. We're going to keep the stories to a minimum because we know your time's available, I mean, valuable and available for us. <laughs> but I deeply appreciate you taking the time to listen to these important people sitting behind us. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Norm Johnson. I represent the 14th District, which is multiple counties in eastern Washington, Clark, Skamania, Klickitat, and part of Yakima. Uh, I love their button, Mr. Chairman, which says they're retired but not expired. I know some of my colleagues probably <laughs> think that I'm expired, but I'm not, and I'm here to tell you we need to do what's right. Thank you. <laughs> Let's stay on task. Uh, and I'm here to ask your support of 1484. It would provide a modest increase for these people, a one-time increase in their pensions. And um, I think, too, I'm going to hurry mine along because of the folks behind me. But, you know, there w there's a figure, uh, a pension a figure of about twenty-three dollars to $24,000. But coming from the education TERS one, folks, I think you need to realize that that figure includes people who at that time were superintendents and principals who probably made somewhere between fifty to maybe seventy-five thousand dollars a year. So there's a whale of a lot of teachers, a whale of a lot of state employees that were in Plan 1 that made nowhere near that type of money that is projected as what they're making today. Um, it's, it's always interesting to note that, that these are the one group of people who were eliminated from the pension COLA fund at, back when I think I had my first year here. And uh, I think we did lift, and I think I asked Representative Chandler today, we had people that were making seven, $800 a month, and we lifted those folks up to 1000 well, you know, $1,000, I would defy any one of us to attempt to live on $1,000 a month. And I think what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of folks that are retired trying to make a decision. Do I pay for my medication? Do I pay my rent? Do I buy my groceries? And you know that's wrong. These are people that served us. Some of them were probably well, not mine, but some of you younger ones, probably your elementary school teachers, like Representative Berkowitz there, some of you young fellows. But anyway, we need you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Representative Springer, but I think you're probably in the same grade I was in. <laughs> but uh, We're going to allow a little leeway, but let's keep it within the confines of... <laughs> I'll leave it at that, Larry. But anyway, let's do what's right for these people. We've got the McClary decision. I think we all realize that. But we need to do also the right for these people who served us so well so many years ago. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And we'll begin public testimony on House Bill 1484. Representative Robinson. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to apologize in advance for any names that I mispronounce. There are, there's a long list of folks signed up to testify. I'll call three at a time to come up and then three more to get ready to come on the next panel. So first we have Peter Diedrich, Rick Niebecker, Fred Yancey. If they could come forward and sit at the table. And then um, Maria Britton, Florence Reap, and Nancy Healy, get ready to uh, be on the next panel. Thank you. And if I may ask uh, former Representative Hinkle if you could uh, grab a chair so that we might have those three for the next folks that come up. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Fred Yancey. I'm here today on behalf of the school retirees. Um, I think you heard from the two uh, sponsors of the bill <coughs> the uh, specifics about this, but you need to just keep in mind in, in your picture that these plans were closed in 1977. So what we're talking about are our oldest retirees or the older class of retirees who sit in two programs, retirement programs, out of over 16 that the state offers, and it's the only two that don't get any cost of living adjustment. These people are dying on the vine in terms of, you know, trying to maintain an adequate, suitable uh, existence through retirement on a fixed income. This bill is, and it's been stated, is just a modest attempt to recognize the fact that this, you know, that their needs need to be addressed in some fashion, in a modest fashion. Ideally, we'd love the 3% COLA that all the other retirement, you know, plans get, but we know that that's not fiscally feasible. But we ask you today to please be sensitive to their needs and help them out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Pete Diedrich, Legislative Director for the Washington State School Retiree Association. Um, Thank you for, for, for hearing this bill. Uh, this Normally I would speak for the association, but this is so important. We flew our association president over from Walla Walla to be here today. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Rick Nebecker, uh, and I cede the rest of my time to him. Thank you. I am Rick Nebecker and president of the Washington State School Retirees. We are an organization composed of 18,000 members from all areas of school employment. And I would like to thank you for giving us a chance to talk about this important issue. It is a very important issue. I would also like to thank Representatives Dolan and Johnson for their leadership, and along with the 30 co-sponsors. Plan 1 contains the most elderly group of school employees. I know that doesn't sound great, but they are the most elderly group of the school employees. As with all school employees, money was not the reason they decided to work in schools. Rather, they do it to make the lives of students in their communities better. When they work in schools, they do know that there is a retirement program, and that helps make the deal better. For the most senior Plan 1 members, the starting teacher salary was $49.95 per year in 59 to 60. This is according to national statistics. After 30 years of service in 1989-90, they were making 31,367. When these members retired, their retirement was figured off those figures. Taking 60% of 31,367, the base is 18,820, or about 1,500 a month. That is uh, before taxes and health care, of course. Even considering Social Security, it does not make for a strong income. Without a COLA, that 18820 hasn't grown. However, the price of everything else has grown tremendously. In looking at a 10-year study of food costs, I found bacon rose from 324 a pound to 625 a pound, and a can of tomato soup went from 50 cents to $1.69. The Plan 1 members who have given so much to our communities deserve to be treated fairly, and restoring this COLA is a good first step. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maria, Florence, Nancy, and then if Ken Mort Mortland, Eleanor Watton, and Lee Ann Prelip could be on uh, deck for the next panel, that would be great. Thank you. And if I excuse me for interrupting, Maria, I'm just going to explain our little traffic light that we have up here, which is uh, green. Uh, so we have two and a half minutes uh, per person testifying. And so for two minutes, it will be green. And then for 30 seconds, it will be yellow. And then for about 10 seconds, it will be red. I'd really like to have you concluded before that red light goes off. And I'll give a gentle reminder. Hello, my name is Maria Britton Sipe, and I'm the Executive Director of Retired Public Employees Council of Washington. Currently, there's only two of the 18 public employee pension plans that have no COLA protection for retirees to protect their standard of living. Those plans are PERS-1 and TERS-1. The first 25 years of the plan, they received a total of 13 ad hoc uh, COLAs which were typically 3%. From 95 to 2010, as you heard, they received a uniform cost of living adjustment. But since 2010, nothing. It marks the longest period without a COLA in the last 50 years. The state actuary found that someone who had retired in 1980 had seen a loss of their purchasing power of 30%. The Seattle Consumer Price Index reports inflation of 11.6 percent since 2010 when they had their last COLA. This seriously undercuts the retirement stability of these retirees, whose modest pensions only average around $23,600 a year. In fact, 53 percent of all Plan 1 members make under $24,000 a year, and 81 percent make under $36,000 a year. That leaves many worried about covering their expenses. We have an aging population that is one medical bill away from falling into poverty, and after a lifetime of service, that it's unacceptable. They are hurting financially and need your help to maintain a decent standard of living. I would like to introduce uh, two Plan 1 members, Nancy Healy and Florence Reap. Thank you. Hello, Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Nancy Healy. I'm here uh, from Olympia, Washington. I do appreciate the Chairman explaining about the lights because they don't always let me talk because I talk too long. <laughs> we do it to members so as well. Thank you. As a <laughs> I worked for 30 years as an administrative assistant for both the Office of the Insurance Commissioner and the Attorney General's Office. I retired 10 years ago, and my pension is just over $20,000 a year. It has been the same since 2007 because I'm a Plan 1 member. I live with heart problems, and two years ago I had a heart attack. Though a large chunk of my income goes to an ever-increasing Medicare supplement premium, which is currently about 4000 a year, I was grateful to have that coverage. There are many Plan 1 members like myself who are struggling to cover our expenses but many are too ashamed and embarrassed to tell their stories. I'm not sure how we Plan 1 members will be able to cover our everyday costs, such as utility bills, phone service, groceries, and medications without a means to keep up with inflation. We are not trying to be greedy. We are only asking the legislature for a, a bill, a bit of relief, and I'd like to repeat that there are many of our members that are too ashamed and embarrassed to come here and tell you their stories. Please support House Bill 1484, a one-time COLA. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Florence Reap. I am a Plan 1 retiree from Mount Vernon, Washington. I support House Bill 1484. I worked for 25 years for Employment Security Department and my pension is $14,800 annually. This is not a large amount, and I must give up many things in order to pay the bills. Without a COLA, it has been especially difficult to keep up with my health insurance premiums. Through the Public Employees Benefits Board, 
I have uniform medical plan to supplement Medicare. Those premiums have increased by $116 per month since 2010. Please help us. We have given many years of service and just asked to receive enough to live with dignity instead of asking for public aid. Thank you. Thank you. Ken, Eleanor, Leanne, and then following them, uh, if we could have Richard Haldy, Pat McLaughlin, and Gary Gerst. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Representative Springer. Representative Haller, Representative Wilcox, Representative Manweller, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you to the members of the committee. Um, this bill will make it possible for the spreadsheet that I do on my income and my outlays with, uh, to just about break even for the first time in about a decade. Um, the, the cost of medical expenses, um, excuse me, the cost of medical plans that cover my medical expenses for which I am very grateful, by the way. You've been very kind to me by allowing me to be part of that uh, uniform COLA or uh, uniform uh, insurance organization. I uh, have been substantial. I had double bypass four years ago. Um, and because of the programs that you have provided, um, I didn't have a tremendous out-of-pocket expense. <coughs> However, I do have a substantial out-of-pocket expense on premiums, and this particular bill will help resolve that problem, and I thank you for the opportunity to tell you that. Thank you. Chairperson Ormsby and members of the committee, I'm Leanne Prelip, a retired teacher and member of TERS Plan 1, and representing other WEA retired members across the state. After 35 years of service, I retired in 2002. I finally received what was then known as the Uniform COLA in 2010. After eight years of no increases to my pension, it was extremely helpful in budgeting my retirement expenses, especially with the annual increases for health care premiums. Unfortunately, that was the only year I ever received an increase in my pension. <laughs> I, it became clear that I would have to do and be much more vigilant in budgeting as my health care premiums continued to rise, as did everyday living expenses such as food, housing, utilities, etc. This year, my health plan premium alone has increased $40 per month. This proposed enhanced retirement benefit for Plans 1 will be a sound step in assisting all Plans 1 retirees, especially our oldest retirees, those with the lowest monthly pensions, to be productive, contributing members of our communities. And I applaud these efforts and encourage the passage of the bill and the funding for House Bill 1484. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman Armsby and committee members, I would like to thank you for this afternoon hearing. I am Eleanor Watton, a retired teacher, and I am here today to speak on behalf of the oldest and most vulnerable retirees from teaching and from public employment in the state, namely the retirees in Plan 1 called PERS 1 and TERS 1. Since 2011, we in this group have had no COLA, and the results of that have been devastating to many and severely limiting to the rest. In addition to the cancellation of our COLA, we, like other retirees in our nation, have been economically hit, one, a deteriorating buying power of our Social Security checks, 22% since the year 2000 reported by last month's Harper Magazine, two, exceedingly low interest rates on any savings, and three, increasing high health insurance payments taken from our Social Security for Medicare and from our state pensions for additional coverage. For those of us in our 80s and 90s, this cancellation of our state COLA has created a real hardship. Where many of us thought that our state two-part pension COLA was secure, we had the shock of being proven wrong. 
a quick move right now to pass through our legislature a fair, just, and secure law for the per, our PERS-1 and TERS-1 retirees will fastly remove the anxiety about a COLA that many of these retirees have and also will be in our state's best immediate and long-term interest so that our legislature can get on with other state business. As other state retired pensioners have retained their COLAs and working state employees and elected officials have received raises, the PERS-1 and TERS retirees would like to also have a fair and secure COLA that is one time, uh, not just not one time, but permanent. Don't forget, we were the lowest paid state employees and teachers. As a result, our pensions are less than others to start with. And we need to have a quick correction with a fair, secure COLA. Let's look at this proposed bill. Is there a way to make a continuing COLA for PRS1 and TRS1 retirees, not just a one-time thing? Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'll take questions if there are any. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Richard, Pat, Gary, and uh, behind them, if we could have Don Bunger, Kathy Ream, and Sharon Dennis on deck for the next round. Good afternoon. Richard, you're first. Uh -huh. uh, my name is Richard Haldy. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members for providing us with the opportunity to speak today. I was, uh, my professional career involved 44 years, 39 in the public schools, and five as a commission officer in the Air Force, serving two tours in Vietnam as an air refueling combat, on air refueling combat missions. And then I was very fortunate after uh, coming back from the Air Force to get a job at Everett Community College where I was there for 37 years. My first two years before I was in the Air Force was in a middle school. So when I retired in 2008, my fan financial planning included the TERS-1 COLA, which then stopped in 2010. The, what my calculations tell me that the first three years of that COLA increased my gross pension by about 10 percent. When it stopped, of course, it didn't increase any, but my net premium was reduced by uh, $210 because of health care costs, health care and dental costs, about 50 percent. So if that continues that way, no COLA, and for the next 10, 20, 20 years, the health care costs would decrease my monthly net income by anywhere from 400 to 600 more dollars, leaving me with $800 less than my monthly net income than it was at the end of 2010. So we appreciate, I really appreciate your work on all this and for those of us who are in TS1, and thank you again. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the Appropriations Committee. My name is Pat McLaughlin, and I'm a, in the TERS-1 retirement plan, retired for six years uh, from 46 years of service to the citizens of Washington State. I served 18 years as a high school teacher at North Hurston High School, and I also served 28 years as a writer, researcher, and statewide program manager for various Washington State agencies. My ed education includes a master's degree in American literature from WSU, a standard general K-12 through teacher's certificate, and a master's in public administration from the Evergreen State College. I'm a member of the Thurston County School Retirees Association School Retirees Association, NWSSRA, and I support the passage of House Bill 1484. I feel that I serve my community well during those 46 years. I paid into my TERS-1 retirement plan, hoping that it would serve me well during my retirement. But without a cost of living adjustment, my TERS-1 pension has fall, fallen about 12% 12 12 due to inflation since I retired. I'm worried now about my future, my medical bills and insurance, home and 
car insurance, house maintenance, utilities, long-term care insurance, food, and other life costs keep going up each year, and this pension does not. I'm frugal, shopping sales, senior discounts at the co-op, thrift stores, carpooling, maintaining a large vegetable and fruit garden, but I still can't keep up with paying my bills without a cost of living adjustment on this pension. I'm one of many seniors, enters one, who have served our community devotedly and now are asking for your help in meeting our needs. As the newer retirement plans have a COLA, it is only fair and just that TERS 1 at least has this one-time cost of living adjustment proposed in House Bill 1484. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gary Gerst. Um, I live in the 35th district. I've lived in the 20th and the 22nd, and I've never moved. <laughs> <laughs> I taught, I guess, in all three. Um, 40 years as an educator, full-time, and uh, still love it. I teach part-time uh, on an interim basis now for seniors at the Senior Center, and I do it to fill the gaps. And the gaps are well known to you. The Medicare eligible subsidy went down, the COLAs didn't occur, and our pension fund got raided years ago. You didn't do that but here you have a chance to at least make it partially right. We are taking steps to repay the unfunded liability that was borrowed from our fund. Thank you for that. And now it's time to do the next right thing. So that 60 bucks would probably buy me two jars of pills or maybe pay two copays, but it would sure be appreciated and I hope you'll do it. Thank you. Thank you. Dawn, Kathy, Sharon. Thank you. I'm Kathy Ream, and I taught for 30 years in, in Cedar Woolley in Skagit County. And I want to talk to you a little bit about how we were the kids who followed the rules. My dad was a custodian, the janitor in my small town in Texas, and I was one of the first to go through the National Defense Education Act, and I paid my loans back. My husband, Robert, went through school on the GI Bill and became an x-ray tech. All of our lives, we paid our taxes, we paid into Social Security, we paid into our retirement programs, and we paid for our insurance. I retired in 2000 and worked for six years for Skagit Mediation Services, where I still uh, volunteer. In 2008, my husband lost a large portion of his retirement to Wall Street. Uh, it wasn't a good plan. It was a highly recommended one. We were playing by the rules. We were the kids who followed the rules. Timing is everything. Last year, after a lifetime of good care, I had of, of good health, I had cancer surgery, radiation. Robert had cancer surgery twice, chemotherapy. We had good care. We know we are lucky. In January 2015, we sold our home to our daughter and daughter-in-law. They live upstairs. We pay a modest rent, do the chores. We are the future of what retirement may well be. We are lucky to live in the home that we love so much. You know I have not received a cost of living. You understand the economics of all of this. I was born in 1945. Timing is everything. I am a proud plan member of, of the public school employees and what we do now is we hold our parents when they die. Many of us in this room take care of our grandchildren so our children can work at two jobs. We volunteer to feed the hungry. We put up posters for the Lincoln Theater. We are the core of volunteers in every part of the state. We are being told that ordinary people should not expect to succeed just by working hard and playing by the rules. As your employee for 30 years, I had a contract and a covenant regarding my pension. Right now, we don't know whether to mistrust corporations or government. We don't know which one it is that's not looking after us. But I can tell you that they did not call us to Wall Street to chat about Robert's loss for his uh, retirement. So I really appreciate that you ask us to come here today. I hope you'll hear what we have to say. And I, I love my government. I love our government. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman Norman Speak and committee. I'm here to talk about a cohort of people, and I don't know the number, but if you were born in 1944, 
you need to be 66 before you could get the cola, and that just as you arrived for the cola, the cola did not make it. So think about the 44 to 45 and all the baby boomers. They've never had anything. I'm speaking for them today. Never had anything in a, in the, in a form of a cola. Yes, I've had a little bit of a cola, and it was great. So please think of them when you realize that nothing has come to them in that form. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is Sharon Dennis here? Sharon had signed up. Uh, that concludes the folks that have signed up to testify unless we've missed anyone. Come forward, sir, and please check in uh, at the desk. Mm -hmm. Come forward. Okay. okay. We, missed we, it. we missed it. It happens. We make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I made a mistake. No, Not on. we. I was corrected. Could you With give your, us your humor, name? you'd be a good middle school teacher. <laughs> if you could give us your name, just so that we can make sure we've uh, we've we've get the right person. I'm uh, William H. Buteris. I go by Bill Buteris. Uh, I don't have a lot of titles or anything, except that uh, uh, observing this, uh, all this political stuff, I'm a whole lot glad that I was a teacher rather than a politician. <laughs> Um, I taught middle school science 12 years in Walla Walla, 22 years in Bremerton, and uh, I, uh, when I was planning for my retirement, I looked at all the pamphlets and perused them quite thoroughly, and Plan 1 had a cola in it. It said it had a cola in it, and I wouldn't have taken it if I didn't know it had that. And, uh, so anyway, I felt a little misrepresented by that. Um, I want to also thank uh, Lori Dolan and Ron Johnson for presenting this. We appreciate what you're doing. I think uh, Eleanor Walton said this shouldn't just be one year, though. Get it over with now and get it done. Uh, it's pretty inequitable that you have, and I'm only speaking for the teachers because I don't know the other plan, but uh, all the other plans have a COLA and we don't, and uh, that's kind of a discrimination. And then I look at that, and I'm, I'm 72. I'm one of the younger people here, and uh, I think. <laughs> and uh, anyway, um, I, I look at this almost as uh, uh, age discrimination. Now, I understand that this went through the court systems all the way to the state Supreme Court, and it's not allowed to go through the federal court system, but, uh, and it got turned down. Now, whatever reason that was, I can't imagine. But I think if it went through as age discrimination, which this definitely is, if you look at the ages of the people behind me, uh, that's something that, you know, it'd be a shame if, if that had to happen and go through and waste a whole lot of people's time for the right thing to be done. Um, and uh, I think if it started now as, uh, um, if it started now as the COLA and continued, that would be fair. Um, if it went through the court system again and, uh, and it ended up age discrimination and uh, the teachers won, then there'd probably be a retroactive aspect to that too. And that'd be pretty expensive. So it looks like my time is done. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, I enjoyed being a teacher, and thank you for letting me have a turn. Thank you. And Mr. Buteris, if you could uh, check in with, uh, uh, with the staff so that we make sure that we enter you correctly into the record. Anyone else uh, sign up to testify that we haven't heard from? Seeing that we don't. Uh, Being no further business before the committee, we're adjourned.